Hello everybody, thanks for staying connected. Now rolling right along now, we meet a man who is just as famous as the great champions of the Tour de France. Legendary broadcaster Phil Liggett has been calling the race for more than four decades. He shared some of his favorite moments with Kelly Gregg. Take a look. Vincenzo Nibali conquers the Tour de France for a third time and the yellow jersey is even safer on his shoulders now. Well, that was the voice of Phil Liggett, and here's the man himself. Phil, thanks so much for joining us today. Lovely to see you, Kelly. Well, you're known as the voice of the Tour de France, and after broadcasting for so many years yeah. in a sport that, event that lasts over a month, or around a month, mm. how do you keep it interesting day after day? Well, people used to say to me, you know, you've seen this Tour de France for 30, 40 years. Why do you want to keep going to the same event? And I say because you never see the same event twice. Hmm. Yes, it's a cycle race and that's where it stops. It's, it's a three-week race. In Britain, it's become very popular on television, also in the States uh, on NBC. And people develop a feeling for the characters of the riders. There's 198 riders. They've all got their own soul and heart. Um, and if you bring the audience in over a period of three weeks, they start to feel for them. When they fall off and they're covered in blood, they have to finish the day to start the next day. They limp in. Then they get a feeling for these guys and, well, I'm often told that when that Tour de France is over, they feel as though I've taken something away from them because they miss the daily dose of the Tour. Well, of course, these riders in the Tour de France come from mm. all over the world. So how do you remember everyone's name in the pronunciations and do all that research? Well, the research is, is pretty easy because I do it every day of my life. Even before I came in the studio today, I've already caught up on the European results and I add them to a file which I created many years ago. So, for example, if you pick your nose, it'll be on your record, and I'll tell you the day you did it. Uh, so when I go to the commentary box, which is on the finishing line of each stage of the tour, it's rebuilt every day, uh, then I'm ready. Uh, regarding the pronunciations, well, when you get somebody that you've got to call fast, like Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov, uh, and he's a sprinter, and you're going to call it full sprinting commentary mode, uh, you can trip over yourself, obviously. but. I learned with the people, really. I mean, this year we had a, a new Polish guy, and Poles have never known to do well in the Tour de France. Uh, this year we had Rafael Maika. Well, I had a few goes at his name before I finally settled for the right pronunciation, because with these <laughs> days of social media, people are very quick to point out. Well, I mean, you've been broadcasting <laughs> the Tour de France for mm. 42 years. And in that yeah. time, is there one moment that really stands out for you as a broadcaster? Well, the one moment I always say when I'm asked the question is the 1989 Tour de France uh, because the last day had been a wonderful tour and it was, we were poised. There was a, a great Frenchman, Laurent Fignon, he sadly died of cancer now. And Laurent was winning the tour. He won it twice before in the early 80s, uh, but was six years on from his last victory in 89. And uh, he was up against Greg LeMond, who was trying to become the first American. On the, not, it would be the second win, but the first American to win the Tour was Greg in 1986. And he'd come back because he'd been shot by his brother-in-law in a hunting accident. Oh my gosh. Thought he was a turkey and shot him in the bushes. But anyway, he came back from that. And here is his first Tour return and uh, pushing Fignon all the way. All that was left on that was the last day in uh, the Palace of Versailles to Paris, the Champs-Élysées, a time trial. It's only a few kilometres, 28 kilometres from memory. Fignon had nearly a minute's lead. Now, you don't wipe out a minute's lead. But I had to say to the camera at the start of the program who was going to win. And I said, well, I actually think Greg LeMond's going to win this. And he'll win by six seconds. Because if you're going to take a minute back off a guy, it ain't going to be by much. Hmm. Uh, and he won by eight. Well, It's a bold prediction. Uh, it, 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 well, it, it came true. Uh, but the people complained because they said I gave the result away, thinking <laughs> it was a recorded program. It was live, of course. And, and I just guessed lucky. That's an amazing story, and I mean, yeah. from, from the tour's heyday, I mean, in recent years, it's become a controversial sporting totally. event. We, yeah. And uh, you were a strong supporter of Lance Armstrong in the beginning. I was. And now, how did you change uh, that opinion? Well, only because he confessed. Um, I, was, I was prepared to give him the benefit of the doubt right up until he actually was forced into making a confession in the end of the day, and he made the confession. Uh, but, you know, what we now know, and we're, we're nearly 10 years on from the, his last victory in the Tour de France, um, what we now know is that virtually all the guys in the Tour in that era were taking drugs. Mm -hmm. Lance just was doing better than most. Well, with all this scandal, it's really made people fall out of love with the sport. What the do you think the did. future of cycling is for the Tour de France? It's more rosy than ever. 
uh, it's gone through the bad patch. The, the Tour de France has picked itself up off the ground. I mean, when, when the, the whole scandal happened, uh, people were saying, is it the end of the Tour de France? Hey, the Tour de France has been going since 1903. It has taken strikes, it's taken bomb threats. I've been blown up by, by terrorists. Bomb under my car in Barcelona in 1992. Car was put, shoveled onto the back of a vehicle, it was gone. Uh, they were just using the Tour de France as a wagon uh, to, to spread their reasons for grievance. Striking steel workers, they cancelled a stage on the road in northern France. And so it goes on. The Tour de France has ridden through everything. Now it's going up again, big time. Our viewing figures are, are third up this year, uh, on last year, for example. 54% of the UK, because don't forget this year's Tour de France started from Yorkshire exactly, and into London. 54% yeah. of the nation was watching the Tour de France. That's not my figure, that's an official figure, either on the road or on television. We had five million spectators in Yorkshire. You couldn't tell from a helicopter the riders to the crowd. They merged as one. It was amazing. Well, 42 years of broadcasting, going on 43 next year. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Phil, thank you so much for joining <laughs> me today. Phil Liggett, the voice of the Tour de France. Thanks so much.